to the fig tree on Ninth and Christian. Tumbling through the city in my mind without once looking up, the racket in the lug work, probably rehearsing some stupid thing I said or did, some crime or other. The city, they say, is a lonely place until, yes, the sound of sweeping, and a woman, yes, with a broom, beneath which you are now to the canopy of a fig its arms pulling the September sun to it. And she has a hose too, and so works hard rinsing and scrubbing the walk, lest some poor sod slip on the silk of a fig and break his hip and not probably reach over to gobble up the perpetrator. The light catches the veins in her hands when I ask about the tree. They flutter in the air and she says, take as much as you can, help me. So I load my pockets and mouth, and she points to the stepladder against the wall to mean more, but I was without a sack, so my meager plunder would have to suffice. And an old woman whom gravity was pulling into the earth loosed one from a low-slung branch, and its eye wept like hers, which she dabbed with a kerchief as she cleaved the fig with what remained of her teeth. And soon there were eight or nine people gathered beneath the tree, looking into it like a constellation pointing. Do you see it? And I am tall, and so good for these things. And a bald man even told me so, when I grabbed three or four for him, reaching into the giddy throngs of yellow jackets, sugar stone, which he only pointed to, smiling and rubbing his stomach. I mean, he was really rubbing his stomach, like there was a baby in there. It was hot. His head shone while he offered recipes to the group using words which I couldn't understand. And besides, I was a little tipsy on the dance of the velvety heart rolling in my mouth, pulling me down and down into the oldest countries of my body, where I ate my first fig from the hand of a man who escaped his country by swimming through the night, and maybe never said more than five words to me at once, but gave me fig. And a man on his way to work hops twice to reach at last his fig, which he smiles at and calls baby. Come here, baby, he says, and blows a kiss to the tree, which everyone knows cannot grow this far north, being Mediterranean and favoring the rocky sun-baked soils of Jordan and Sicily. But no one told the fig tree or the immigrants. There is a way the fig tree grows in groves. It wants, it seems, to hold us. Yes, I am anthropomorphizing, goddammit. I have twice in the last 30 seconds rubbed my sweaty forearm into someone else's sweaty shoulder, gleeful, eating out of each other's hands on Christian Street in Philadelphia, a city like most which has murdered its own people. This is true. We are feeding each other from a tree at the corner of Christian and Ninth. Strangers maybe never again.